Hannah is one of my favorite people in the Old Testament. For many years, she was unable to have children, a source of deep pain for her. At one point, she went to the house of the Lord and promised God that if he would bless her with a son, she would dedicate her son to the Lord. God answered her prayer and Hannah kept her word. After weaning her son Samuel, she brought him to live with the priest Eli. Samuel would go on to become a powerful prophet in Israel, playing a prominent role in the kingship of both Saul and David. In 1 Samuel chapters 1 and 2, we hear Hannah's voice lifted up in prayer. In chapter 1, pleading with God for help. And in chapter 2, rejoicing in the Lord for His goodness in bringing her a son. These are beautiful prayers on their own, and I want to highlight some of the connections between Hannah's prayers and what Mary says to her cousin Elizabeth when she is pregnant with the baby Jesus. Hannah prayed, Look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me. Similarly, Mary said, He hath regarded the low estate of his handmaiden. Hannah says, my heart exults in the Lord. My strength is exalted in my God. I rejoice in my victory. Mary declares, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Hannah, who had previously felt weak and abandoned, rejoiced in the strength God had given her. She points out that God will strengthen the feeble and humble the proud, saying, the bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The barren is born seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low. He also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honor. Mary similarly focuses on how roles will be reversed, saying, He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. Both Hannah and Mary acknowledged the power of God. Hannah said, There is no holy one like the Lord, one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Mary proclaimed, The mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. I love all these connections showing the power and mercy of God across the centuries. In a sense, Hannah is a type of Mary. Both Hannah and Mary had miraculous pregnancies, and both Hannah and Mary had sons who would grow up to change the world. In fact, Hannah's son Samuel is a type of Christ. We read, Samuel grew in stature and in favor, both with the Lord and men. Similarly, Luke tells us Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. There are many other connections between Samuel and Jesus. But let's return to Hannah. In some ways, it seems unfair that for years she hoped for a child. And when she finally received one, she has him live with the priest Eli so that he can be dedicated to the Lord as she promised. However, we read, The Lord took note of Hannah. She conceived and bore three sons and two daughters. The Lord did not forget Hannah, and he honored her sacrifice. Hannah is a powerful example of a dedicated disciple. She continued to have faith in God, even in difficult circumstances, and kept her covenants, even when it was hard. I hope that reflecting on her story today helps you and me want to be a little more like her.